Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes in the Sky. What's up this week? The ecliptic is the imaginary line in the sky that the sun appears to traverse as Earth revolves around our host star. Because the solar system is largely on the same plane, most of the major planets in our moon also appear along this line or close to it. In spring, the two first magnitude stars Regulus in Leo and Spica in Virgo helpfully show where this line is, from south towards the east in the evening. This season, Mars is right near Spica, offering a lovely contrast of colors. Subtle to be sure, but Mars is rather orange looking, and Spica has a slight bluish cast to it. This star is rather interesting too. At 250 light years distance and 1,900 times as bright as the sun, it's unsurprisingly quite luminous. Much like many other bright stars in our sky, such as Rigel in Orion and Deneb in Cygnus. What is somewhat unique about Spica though, is that for its brightness, it's not as large as one might expect, even though using it isn't even accurate. They is more like it, as Spica is really two stars, and some odd ones at that. One star is ten and a half times the mass of the sun, while the other six times. And they're incredibly hot too, 22,400 and 18,500 Kelvin respectively. But what's amazing is how close together they are, just 0.12 of an AU. Now, one astronomical unit is the average Earth-Sun distance, so these stars orbit one another three times closer than Mercury orbits our Sun. And because of their greater mass, they orbit each other in just over four days, whipping around each other and causing the other to distort. The primary star may go supernova someday, but no worries, we're at a safe distance. But those aren't the only two orbiting objects in the spring sky. And now this week's dark sky fact. Remember the words full moon illumination. Everyone can see how much light that provides and that it is sufficient for adequate visibility at night. That level of light also does not negatively affect sleep habits. Start using full moon illumination to let people know how much light is enough without them thinking that light at night advocates are seeking total darkness. Full moon illumination is adequate lighting. A short hop away from Spica and Mars are two orbiting bodies at the other end of the scale, although they don't orbit each other, just the Sun. These are the asteroids Vesta and Ceres. There's a bit of a distinction here too. Vesta is an asteroid, but Ceres is both an asteroid and a dwarf planet, the only one in the inner solar system. You can watch these objects move night over night quite easily. Vesta is presently bright enough to see with binoculars and Ceres with most any small telescope. Start at Spica, go up to Mars, and beyond to this star, Zeta Virginis. Then turn about 120 degrees in this direction and follow that line to the fourth magnitude Tau Virginis. All week long, Vesta will be moving away from this star, having skirted within three quarters of a degree of it on March 26th. We also have fantastic close-up photos of Vesta thanks to NASA's Dawn mission. Though this asteroid is far too small and far away to, for us to see anything other than its reflected sunlight. But at magnitude 6, it shouldn't be difficult to find or see with the most basic of optical aid. Ceres, though larger, is a bit farther away. Now Vesta is about 1.25 astronomical units from Earth right now, while Ceres is 1.6 astronomical units, over 20% more distant. Because of this, despite its larger size, Ceres looks fainter from Earth. At about 7th magnitude, it's still visible in most any small telescope from most locations, but binoculars may require a bit more dark adaptation and perhaps some slightly darker skies. Try using averted vision, where you look slightly away from the location you want to see while mentally focusing on the spot the asteroid should be at. The rods in your eyes may help you spot the dwarf planet that way. Jupiter is joined by the moon in Gemini on April 6th. Look for the pair in the evening. Saturn is now visible by midnight, a welcome sight for sidewalk astronomers looking to share the night sky with passersby. And that's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.